Good evening, everyone. My name is Vicki McDonald, and it's my great privilege to be the IFLA president uh, for 2023 to 2025. And I'd like you to welcome you to our IFLA strategy consultation, uh, our latest town hall. And today we'll be talking to you about the new IFLA strategy. Um, if you would like to use the interpretation, just a, a, a reminder to follow the QR code here uh, so that you can join. You can select the language that you'd like to have uh, the event translated into, and uh, and then you should be all set for today. Um, today we'll be using the question and answer that you'll have at the bottom of the screen. So um, I can already see that some people are putting in where they're joining us from, so that would be fantastic if you could um, put in where you're joining from as well. So I'd also uh, like to welcome AFLA's Secretary General, uh, Sharon Memmers, who's joining me this evening. Hi, Sharon, how are you and how's The Hague? Good, well, for me, it's just about good afternoon um, in The Hague. Uh, the Hague is great. It was actually a pretty blue sky this morning, which is always a, a surprise and a pleasure for The Hague. Um, but um, I, I'm sure it's a little warmer where you are, Vicky. So, yes, I'm Secretary General Sharon Memis. And just to note that I will have been in post for exactly one year on the 1st of June. So I can't quite believe it. But uh, greetings anyway from, from The Hague to everybody around the world. Well, congratulations, Sharon. 12 months has certainly flown. It's been fantastic to have you with us as well. I can see some, some congratulations coming up on the screen as Thank well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's have a look at what we'll be talking about this evening. Uh, really what tonight's session is real, uh, and I'll say tonight because in Brisbane, Australia, it's it's 9pm, so apologies um, if you're joining from the daytime somewhere else. So the whole purpose of today's session is to take you through the new strategy structure. Uh, we've been working on a new IFLA strategy to cover us the period 2024 to 2029. And we've assumed that you've already had a chance to have a look at the strategy. It is available on the website. And really tonight's session is really about setting you up so that you can answer the questions and provide our, any feedback on where you think the strategy should go. Um, we encourage you to use the Q&A function, uh, which is at the bottom of your screen, to ask any questions questions or to give comments, we'll be monitoring those and we'll be able to review those following the tonight's session as well. As we go through the session, we'll do our best to answer any questions. And if your question's already been answered, we'll move on to the next one. I think it's really important to remember too, if, if something doesn't make sense, do ask us for clarifications because if you can't understand it, it's probably likely that someone else can't understand it as well. But as I said, the goal tonight is really about giving you the context and the background of how the strategy has been developed, how it's been structured, and to really set you up to be in the best position to actually be able to participate in the um, feedback surveys that are going forward and influence how we uh, develop the strategy and achieve our final strategy as well. So that's really what it's all about. Over to you, Sharon. Okay, so where are we? Um, this is just a bit of a reminder of our timeline. And, you know, note that, of course, one of the big priorities in, um, in Vicky's speech last August was to develop the new strategy. So, so here we are, but not just develop a new strategy, but to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to really input. Um, and I do want to thank everybody. We've had a tremendous response to these surveys. We really have, and it's given us such rich data. And um, I hope you'll see and recognize your contribution somewhere in this draft strategy. Um, so, you know, last October, we, we had the pulse surveys. We started that um, and we've published all of the data and you can look at some really quite granular data on the website. Um, the December governing board really looked at some of those results. We started to narrow it down into these change pathways. Um, we then shared those with everybody, which allowed us to further analyze, understand your priorities. And then in April um, at the governing board meeting, we had a sort of draft zero, which the governing board looked at, commented on. We revised it. We shared it. 
and we're now in that consultation period so that what we're we're ready to do um, is to launch it and begin it in September. And as I say, I hope it responds to your priorities and you recognize something within here. Thank you. Next slide. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks. And um, as you said, it's been really fantastic to have so much input into the development of the strategy so far. So our goals for today are, are really around looking at the strategy. As I said, talk about the structure of the strategy. We'll have a look at the new vision that's been proposed and also talk about impact areas and enablers. And then in the wrapping up section, we'll provide some information on next steps and how you can participate in the next phase of the development of the strategy as we move towards finalising that strategy. So we go to the next slide. Um, so our goals for today, I think we've certainly covered that out as well. But overall, we want the strategy that really supports the work that IFLA is doing in realising that our potential as a global organisation for libraries. And uh, we really want to ensure that you understand what's being proposed and so that you can provide the feedback. As I've, I've, we've already said a number of times, this, real, this session is really about setting you up to be able to provide feedback to the survey that we're providing. So actually, Sharon, I might just, I've lost my screen, so I might just get you to talk through that if I can. Sorry. Happy to do that, Vicky. Um, so um, looking back really at our last strategy, well, the current strategy that we're, we're using, one of the questions was really how IFLA's members and volunteers used that strategy. And I think this gives an example um, there's a lot more data, I say, do please look at the um, website to get the, the data. But you can see on the blue bars, that indicates the percentage of respondents who agree or strongly agree that they've used the current strategy in the way indicated. And the red bars are those who disagree or strongly disagree. I mean, unsurprisingly, um, there was a strong awareness of the strategy given the topic of the survey. But there are also positive balances in general, except on making regular reference to the strategy and using it to structure work in associations or institutions. But you can see, for example, that almost 50 percent of respondents have been inspired by the current strategy in their own professional work. Um, and of course, what the graph doesn't show is the strong regional variation and the differences between members and volunteers. Um, as I say, look at the website for more granular information, which is which is really quite interesting. But I think the key point is that the IFLA strategy means different things to different people. And so it's quite unusual compared to a strategy in many organisations. OK, um, do you want me to go on with the next slide, Vicky, or, or have you got your screen back? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I guess the problem is I, I can't see all of my screen, unfortunately, so oh. um, I might just let you keep going with that one. Okay, okay. then, will do. And mm. I think this, this slide looks instead at what members and volunteers want from the new strategy. Um, you know, and earlier this year, we sent out our fifth pulse survey, and it covered the different areas and the types of action that the governing board felt we might want to prioritise with the new strategy. That was what we called the change pathways, and there were, I think, 10 of them. And this graph shows the most popular responses um, were better connecting our vision with our actions, making the strategy adaptable and adoptable by all and showing the development contributions of libraries. So I think that's fairly, fairly clear. And if we look at the next slides, we can see um, a reminder of what those change pathways were and the percentage of respondents who, who chose those. And I, I, you know, I think it's it's quite interesting. Nothing was, nothing fell off the cliff. Um, and Clearly, what we've tried to do with the new strategy, the draft strategy, is to, to make sure we're really focusing on those priorities. But, of course, many of them overlap. And although the top one was linking vision and actions, and I think the structure we've done has tried to do that a lot, we have tried to ensure that we're, we're, we're covering everything. So we haven't ignored the importance of partnerships and reflecting public interest, which, of course, for 
uh, um, uh, you know, I wish to go for a, a, an AMBI, a charitable status, is really important. Okay, uh, next slide then. So if we just look at that slide too, I think just if I can comment, Sharon, just on the yeah. previous slide, I think Please. it's really, you know, really important that first particular change pathway around the vision and actions, really that importance. And I think that's what our new strategy focuses on. Over 50, nearly 50% 50 of our of our respondents being focused on that but also being adaptable and adoptable and I think I know in my work that's something that's really important to us is actually being able to look at the IFLA strategy and think about how it relates to our work our library and I know that associations and other institutions would be doing the same thing as well yeah yeah absolutely okay Thanks. So um, we'll go on to the structure of the draft strategy. And please do just interrupt Vicky <laughs> um, when, yes. when you can see. So sure. um, looking um, at the next. Yes. Yes, I can do this one. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yep. Um, so, <laughs> yes, it's a bit. Um, so I guess the structure is really important to remember that we did do a lot of work on the global vision, our current strategy, and so it really this strategy is building on that previous strategy and also recognising that we did have over 32,000 respondents in that world uh, global vision strategy. But you'll see as we go through the strategy, and if you've had a chance to look at it already, there's a really strong focus on impacts and how we, our work and our work together helps the wider library field. And it's very much working towards our own, our new vision. We're also looking for greater, greater clarity in our presentation. And the team at the IFLA headquarters has done a lot of thinking about how to actually present the strategy uh, so that it makes sense and you can see how it interrelates to each other as well. It's very much about a, a model to explain the work that IFLA is doing, but it's also that it works across the many sectors and uh, groups of libraries across the world. It's not just focused on one particular type of library. And what we're really encouraging people to do, particularly our sections and our committees and our groups, is to think about developing one and two year plans, really taking that long term view. And really the, the overall strategy is a perspective on how to see the work of IFLA's role in the library field as well. Maybe if I can just add to that, um, the way sure. we've tried to do the, the, the visual side of it is to get a strategy on a page, in a sense. And anyone who's worked with um, in development and knows about a theory of change uh, will recognise the format and the structure. What we've tried to do is move away from, from the last strategy, which was very much talking about actions and activity, to focus much more on impact and results. What's the difference that we are going to make? And that I think you'll see um, that brings in a certain accountability, which, which we welcome. And it brings in a way of how we measure how successfully we're actually delivering on it. So I hope that that will give those of you familiar with theories of change and that kind of planning will help you find your way around the, the structure of the new strategy. I think that's a really important uh, new, imp a new I, I guess, idea that we've implemented in is this the performance measures and being able to measure that impact as well, which is really mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Yeah. So really, and I guess this picks up my um, my theme as well is working together that really as as a sector, our cooperation and working together at an international level really has impact. And and so that's why we're working together for uh, IFLA, but also for the sector and also for the communities that we serve as well. And uh, we, how to read the strategy, as, as uh, Sharon's already talked about, it provides a theory of change. It's connecting the work that IFLA does with the wider library field, but also focused on the outcomes, but also how we actually measure the impact of what we're doing. Uh, so it's really about us working as a sector, a global sector of libraries working together to achieve work that we're focused on together, but also within our communities, our groups as well. So, um, so here okay. is the structure. I'll let you explain that one, Sharon. Okay, then. So this is, as I say, this kind of visual of getting everything on a page, and and we'll we'll gradually build up on this. Um, those of you who've read the draft strategy will know that underneath, of course, there's more detail. 
but we like the idea of just having it on, on a single page. And at the top, it is this vision. And then it's an explanation of how we can achieve this broken down into key sort of three key areas of impact across the library field. And then in turn, it's really the three areas of where IFLA can be active and actually help support this happening. So we, in some ways, what we've tried to do is to flip it a little and rather than saying IFLA, 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 it's really about how IFLA contributes to and helps libraries, helps our members, our volunteers, associations, institutions achieve um, this, this vision and to give you the, the tools. And we've underneath, you know, we, we've moved away, as I say, moving away from a strategy that talks about what we do, rather to one that sets out the difference we will make and how we can all work together to achieve that. So from, as I say, from activity to impact. And I think importantly, recognising there, Sharon, the enablers, um, yeah. to enable um, the activities, but also the measures of success at the bottom there is really quite important as well, measuring that impact. Indeed. And, and we'll come on to that later, but that's very much about us holding the mirror up to ourselves, if you like, but also giving you tools and our members tools to measure their success as well, which will in turn help make the case for, for, for libraries. Okay, so let's perhaps then move on to the actual vision. <laughs> and um, and this is where we, we, we start because in a sense, um, we always say, you know, unless you've got a destination, um, it's very hard to find your way. So we've been, we've tried to get a vision um, that really sets out how um, the library field is achieving this vision. So next slide. So we've got sustainable futures for all through knowledge and information. And um, first of all, it's short <laughs> and it is easier to remember. Um, I have to say that I've been here for a year, but I still struggle um, to always remember the exact wording and the order of our current vision. This one I remembered really from the, from day one. And I think the governing board really embraced this. And, and I, I, you know, Vicky, I hope you'll confirm that. And what we've done as well is to start from the world, setting out really the world that we want to achieve, that sustainable futures for all, and then how libraries can really contribute to that. And how do we achieve this? And I, I will now read this from the slide. Libraries, their workforce and their associations globally have the capability, contacts, confidence and resilience to realize their potential to drive sustainable development in a fast evolving world. So it is very much a really clear vision, I hope that, that people will, will like. And it's about capturing that powerful potential and contribution um, that libraries make in that wider ecosystem to build a better world for everyone. So that's how we've tried to, to do it. And then everything else really flows from that. Okay, next slide. And um, the way that we're, we we sort of look at it, if you like, is that if you can think back to that original um, sort of vision on uh, the strategy on a page and those those three boxes at the top, which were the, you know, what does this mean for the, the global um, library field? And these are really the three areas. And again, we, we've kind of gone with the power of three because we think it's easier to remember. Um, and first, it's really innovative, effective, ethical, professional practice. And this is really about how library and information professionals constantly involve, improve and innovate in response to the communities that they serve. The, the second one is around impactful engagement with stakeholders and communities. And, you know, we at IFLA, we have a brilliant advocacy team, brilliant because it's able to work and draw on experts from, from all over the world amongst our members and volunteers. And we do have a seat at some of the most powerful international tables where we're constantly making the case for libraries. And I think some people don't always 
uh, are not always aware of that work, but it's incredibly powerful because we all know that going to a partner, going to a government and saying, libraries are great, you know, without really some of the evidence and the skills and the tools to, to make that case, it's much harder. So we want to make sure that everybody's got those skills so that we are all making the case globally for libraries everywhere to ensure that our libraries are properly resourced, properly supported. Third, structures and capacity for delivering development goals. And this is development in the broadest sense. This isn't um, simply about um, sustainable development in, in uh, emerging economies or, or global south. This is globally development. And it's that libraries and information workforce at all levels have the structures and networks necessary to collaborate for delivery and to evaluate success. You know, we're really trying to look at how we can optimize delivery and how we can demonstrate the success of what we're doing. And so these are the kind of broad areas and that we see all associations, institutions, agencies, and of course, individuals contributing to this. And importantly, as I said before, it's not just about IFLA, it's about setting out the basics of that theory of change for a library powered improvement in the world to build that better future, sustainable futures for all. And later we'll look at how we hope IFLA can help and enable this to happen. Um, next slide. So um, I think I'm going to be handing over to Stephen um, Weibo, who is going to um, get some input from you through Menti. Stephen, over to you, please. Yes. So uh, I'm constantly. You've received a lot of information, and of course, you, you've had access to the um, to the to the strategy in in all little languages for for a couple of weeks already. And so I think just just to start, we wanted to ask a couple of um, quite high level questions about whether for you the the vision, the explanations of how we see libraries contributing to this vision, are they clear and are they uh, convincing? And so what you need to do is go to, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with this already, is go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, and use the code 22095098. That's great. So there's a couple of people have found it. So let's give it a couple of minutes so that more people can more people can find this. And do let us know in the chat if you're having problems with this. It's great. There's five responses in already. So there's 45 of us here in total. So let's try, try and get up to about 20, I think, and then we'll... It seems to be sitting at sort of a around an agree. It's not a strongly agree. Yeah, so the most important, most okay. So the, the, this is definitely interesting that there's you know slightly strong, slightly more positive views about the clarity, and I think you can see this big bulge there. The biggest single number of people are voting for that. However, there's a bit more balance between neither disagree nor agree. So I think that's useful feedback on. On that's useful feedback on 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 whether these are convincing and whether we need to how we can strengthen that. So I'm going to move on to the next slide where hopefully you can provide a little bit more information, a little bit more impact, uh, comments on why you answered as you did. But please also use these to ask any questions about the vision, about the how we achieve this sections, and then we can we can look to answer some of those and. Certainly note down the comments, note down suggestions and offer clarifications if that's helpful. So 
just give it another minute to see if anything comes in. I'm conscious that. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Okay. Good. I'll encourage Vicky and Sharon, please do comment on on these as they come in. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so Stephen, I think there's two good pieces of positive feedback. So the vision to action is a good approach. So people like seeing that strong connection, which I guess also reflects the feedback that we had through the Pulse survey. Uh, again, people can see that the vision is understandable. Uh, I guess picking up on what Sharon said, it's easy to remember, uh, which is always important, I think, about a vision. Um, it's uh, broad enough to be... Uh, a, applicable to all kinds of libraries, which is also important. Uh, also some other suggestions around libraries being the center of learning um, as well. I guess a comment around the economic pressures most libraries are having, and I guess that would come through more as we build down into the strategy and actions and activities, considering those sorts of things uh, will come through. I think it's uh, also it really... Yeah, sorry, I was saying I think it's just really good to see um, the bat that it is is short and people like the short and clear, which is which is rather nice. Um, and I, I think it is important to to point out as well that we want to have some more detailed plans underneath because we need to respond to the unknown unknowns that will get thrown at us because you know when we first do a, a strategy, we didn't the last strategy we didn't necessarily know about. Um, the uh, COVID epidemic, the pandemic and the lockdown. So you need to be able to respond. I think it'd be very exciting when the individual, the sort of units and teams actually look at it and see how to make it work in practice. So I think there'll be some great ideas and innovation, I hope that comes from that, but it's uh, it's good. Um, so I, guess, I guess some comments on, you know, like I can see the one on the screen at the moment, the focus on development makes it hard to see how we might be able to drill down to some specific areas like digital scholarship, knowledge management. But I think we'll see that further as we work through the strategy, because uh, at the moment we're at a very high level as well. But good feedback for us to be yeah. thinking about as we develop it. I think it is good. Um, the only thing I'd say about development is that we are using it in that UN term of sustainable development, which is not around, therefore, um, development, which is often used by aid agencies, but actually sustainable development for all. And it's as relevant in North America as it is in 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 I don't know, Zimbabwe or, or wherever. It, it, it is that relevance across the world. So it is that thinking about um, the future. Um, and this, you know, there, there are certain parallels, I think, with the sustainable development goals. But this is so really helpful. comment on, on the practicality of being very practical. Um, I guess, too, I guess this is some initial responses from yeah. people. I guess um, as we work through the presentation tonight, we'll provide a link through to the document as well in the survey so that people can actually look at it again and take more time to review it and provide feedback as well, which is really good. So thank you, everyone, for your comments um, so quickly. Um, it's been really helpful uh, to get that positive reinforcement around the vision, having the clarity and uh, and brevity of a vision as well. Um, and, of course, yeah. yes, that link back to the sustainable development goals, which is driving so much work of libraries around the world, um, is being um, commented on as well. It's great. Really useful feedback. Um, uh, and that will really, I think, help us sharpen up the, um, the text in, in, in places. So thank you so much. It's brilliant, really good. Okay, so, so yeah. Um, shall, I, shall I launch into this yes. and then? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So um, going down, if you like, to the, the, the next level, which is about the um, impact areas, and you'll see how this uh, maps. Um, so the vision, how we achieve this, uh, the three action areas, um, at the level of, if you like, the global library field, and then the actions that we think IFLA as, a, if you like, a headquarters and the volunteers can actually take to help make this happen and contribute to the success of the three impact areas presented earlier. And, you know, for example, the vibrancy really of our communities needs to 
of our professional communities which should really be contributing to impact area one, the innovative, effective, ethical, um, professional practice globally. So um, the one below maps to the one above. I hope that's clear. So next slide as we go through them each in turn. So looking at the three different impact areas that, that map up, if you like, um, we'll look at them in a little bit more detail. And it is very much, as I say, what we can do to help and support. So IFLA there as an enabler, both from headquarters and through um, our volunteers. And um, so let's you know take perhaps each in turn. The first one, the vibrant global professional communities. You know, how can we help build those communities through our volunteers, our communities of practice, um, the professional standards? You know, we have an extraordinary group of some 1,200 volunteers. We know that professional standards is the page which is most visited on our website. Um, and we're very keen to really build on those communities of practice. Uh, to that effect, we've created a new role who's a manager of those communities of practice. And, and she will be doing, I think, some quite interesting work over the coming months on really building those dynamics with um, the rest of the membership team um, and the professional council, regional councils, etc. The second one is about um, we want, you know, libraries are recognized, represented and valued as partners. And this isn't just the IFLA advocacy team doing doing their brilliant job, but it's actually working with you. And many and we know that already many library associations and institutions are already doing absolutely amazing work. I mean, how can we share some of that best practice? How can we ensure that everybody's got the skills um, and the evidence and the uh, the tools, if you like, to make sure that, that they are recognized, uh, that libraries are recognized for their incredibly important role. And third, that libraries are enabled to deliver meaningful change at all levels. And this is how, you know, we're, we're going to be really investing more and more in our regional structures so that we can ensure the global relevance. And that for me is, I think, a particular priority. We want to make sure that we are as relevant in, in, um, in MENA as we are in Europe, as we are in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, so just everywhere. And, and we have to try and make sure that that's happening in, at all levels. We do want to give people the tools. We want to get that exchange of best practice. The, the expertise amongst our volunteers and members, as I keep saying, is absolutely extraordinary. It's not all IFLA, but we can help, we can enable, we can direct, we can connect, we can convene. And I think that that's going to be, um, I hope, a really important part of our role and some of the activities that we develop down. Um, next slide. And, and I think just perhaps highlighting that we see it's really important that we see everybody contributing to this, all units, all members, all volunteers, everybody really contributing to this. Um, and then I think just a, a small word about uh, the enabler. And again, those familiar with um, theory of change will be familiar with this language, this idea of future proofing IFLA and, fu and, and really IFLA being the, um, the enabler to help you make a difference in the world. We're there, we're acting, but it really is about that global library community making a difference in the world. But that IFLA can both amplify the voice and also really support and build capacity. And we are that sort of linchpin in many ways in many conversations around the world. And in order to, I think, make sure that as well, we're building an IFLA that everybody can be proud of and that will is sustainable really over the long term as we come to our, our centenary. And so this is about making sure IFLA is optimized in its functioning. And that's about making sure that we're well managed, that we're very focused on impact, we're delivering as efficiently as we can, that we are transparent, we are bringing in good governance, we're really living that good governance, and that we are helping to broker and build those partnerships and to build the tools and act in a way that creates that sustainable future for IFLA and its members. And that this all leads to really engagement in international librarianship, representing a core pillar of our work 
of library associations, libraries, and the library and information workforce. So in a sense, our, you know, our part of the bargain is making sure that we're future-proofing IFLA. And what we're going to look to you and our members is to making sure that international is featuring in your work. We can always learn, we always learn, we can all contribute. And I think the power, you know, internationally and together, stronger together, as Vicky says, we can be much more powerful and much more effective. So this is the enabler, which will be things happening, if you like, under the under the bonnet of the car, less visible, but absolutely critical to ensure that um, we have um, a really strong IFLA for the future. I think, too, that slide, Sharon, is really important. I think this is really what draws so many people to being involved with IFLA is the international librarianship, that you will always get so much more out of being part of IFLA than you contribute as well. And I think just the dot points on that screen also highlight the work that the governing boards are progressing at the moment, but also that we need to carry that forward to the future, like you said, to really future-proof IFLA for future, um, for our second centenary, I guess, as we move into our second hundred years of, of our federation as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Very Great. strong. So, so again, back to Stephen again. It is, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, again, same um, exercise as, as last time. So as for two, two initial questions about whether the impact areas and enablers that, that um, Vicky and Sharon have presented, are these clear? And secondly, are they convincing for you? And then we'll have the opportunity to um, provide comments and share comments. So um, this should be working, same code as before, same link as before. Some very strong results there so far. <laughs> Great that the first person put five in, so it sort of shot, <laughs> shot to the right. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm hoping as well that um, it, it, you know, as as you all look at this, the different units and and um, divisions and volunteers look at it, will that we'll really improve it, we'll sharpen it. Um, and and you know you'll you'll feel uh, sort of I hope help us make it more convincing if you like. Um, yes, I think we're about up to about halfway. But I think I think it it, it a particularly interesting thing here is actually the the peak, the single largest number of responses is the strongly agree in both cases and then there's very few people none at all actually well one in this case it strongly disagree that the impact areas are, are, are convincing but in general there's very few who are giving more negative things so it, it feels like we've got we've got closer to where we want to be with the impact areas than with the vision so far so let's now move on to providing more open comments Okay, so good. <laughs> we can see it's working. There's a response. I think that that's a really good practical suggestion. There's some positive um, feedback on the format and structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good to hear. Um, yes, positive response about the community of practice role, which uh, I, I 
you know, we have we have great expectations of, and um, uh, I think it'll be very interesting. And I I think it's um, just worth noting as well um, that we we talk about we will be talking about the uh, measuring the impact and success measures and KPIs is that we've also created a new role of a manager of impact and insight. So we've got some real sort of professional expertise in that area. I think we've got a comment there about the word deliver, which is in libraries are enabled to deliver meaningful change at all levels. So um, something for us to, to look at yeah. as well as we get more feedback. And of course, you know, uh, really what sits behind all of IFLA's work is that global reach um, and global perspective. So that's being recognised in the comments there, community-centred approach um, as well. Um, again, another positive feedback on the, the community of practice. And hopefully people can see that of the comments that they provided in, in the different pulse surveys have been reflected in the in the work that's been done so far. And you may like to reflect on that when you give your more comprehensive feedback as well. Let's right, so give it 10 seconds more and then we can we can move on. There'll always be the possibility, even when these, um, even when the this this is closed, we can also um take additional questions if you have any through the Q and A function. I think that's a really important comment there. Village libraries, community libraries, district libraries, everybody can make a big difference. So fantastic. Yeah. Oh, a bit more yeah. there. Um. Oh, and we've got the sustainability angle there as well. So. Thank you, everyone, very much for your comments. It's really fantastic to get such an immediate response and such a positive response to the work that's being done, uh, which can inform us as we go forward as well. Um, but, of course, we'll be able to tell you shortly about what the next steps are um, and your opportunity doesn't end today. So we might just go through to the next steps then and uh, take and explain where we go. As we said at the beginning of the session, this tonight's session has been all about giving you an overall introduction to the new structure of our strategy, how it's been structured um, and its different components. And now we invite you to respond to the survey got the QR code there that you can uh, click on to respond. The deadline for commentary is the 11th of June, so a couple of weeks in which to, to provide that response. And uh, Stephen's just put in the chat where you can actually get the various links to as well, if that's easier for you to link through to. So thanks very much for that, Stephen. And I think the next slide will take us through to the timeline. Oh, no, first off the dashboard. So we did talk about this at the beginning. Really, the structure of the strategy on a page also will look at how we actually measure in our impact and, and look at some performance metrics, indicators, that sort of thing. So it's really important that we're able to measure and demonstrate the impact of this new strategy. This is just a draft page, some different ideas on the sorts of measures and metrics that we could be using to actually measure and, and report on our our uh, impact and our success. And of course, we, we would welcome ideas as well, but this is just there to show that we are thinking about this. And as you're providing your feedback through the survey, the IFLA team will be looking at more at how we actually uh, create this dashboard so that we can be reporting quite regularly to our members and stakeholders on how we're progressing on our strategy as well. So this is just a sample to get us started and to give you an idea of, of what we're looking at progressing as well. 
So looking ahead, we do have a uh, roadmap for moving forward. As I just said, the survey does close on the 11th of June. So you do have several weeks in which to respond. And I think you might like to think about whether you do that individually or get together with your, um, your group, your section, and, and think about it as at that sort of level as well. We certainly welcome all responses to this. As we progress, we'll, the team will be looking at the responses that we gather and presenting it through to the governing board so that we can work on finalising that um, for the strategy. As you know, we're also progressing a new trend report to be released in 2024. So we just need to do a cross check with that to make sure that we've got consistency between that trend report as it's being developed and also the IFLA strategy. During July and September, we'll be helping the IFLA units to explore the work with the new strategy, thinking about the action plan updates and how we can have our different uh, groups, units, sections, look at using the strategy going forward. And then, of course, the grand finale at the IFLA Information Futures Summit in Brisbane will be the official launch of the strategy, as well as the launch of the IFLA trend report that I just uh, mentioned. So, of course, the, the summit commences on the 30th of September in Brisbane uh, here in Australia. And I do hope that we will see many of you at that summit for the launch of the strategy and the trend report as well. Um, Vicky, is it just worth saying that... Um... We also agreed, well, the governing board agreed that uh, the new strategy would actually begin when we launch it so that uh, our planning oh, yes, against the new strategy will be um, from that sort of September, October period, um, just uh, rather than waiting until January 2024, we're going to, yes. uh, 25 rather, we'll start from the, this yes. September, October. So, of course, the strategy does cover that 2024 to 2029 period. Um, and as Sharon just pointed out, yes, very, very good point. Thanks, Sharon, because I, <laughs> I know that that will be a key point the sections will be wondering about is when they move over. So I guess from that around that 1st of October mark, um, we'll be able to move over to that. So I think um, that really brings us to an end of the, the slides and what we wanted to present to you tonight. Um, but I do encourage you to have a look at the website, download the strategy. As Sharon mentioned at the beginning, it is a strategy on a page. So you actually can see at a very high level what the strategy is. But if you download the document, the different um, enablers and um, impact areas are spelt out in more detail, and that enables you to drill into them as well and, and have more detail around how you might be able to respond to it as well. But we're very much looking forward to getting comment um, and bringing that back to the governing board at our June meeting so that we can finalise the strategy as well. So. Um, it has been fantastic to get such positive feedback so quickly this evening. Um, this is the first session. We do have a, several other town halls coming up, and there'll also be one in French, uh, which will be delivered by Sharon and also our president-elect, uh, Leslie Weir. So um, uh, something to look forward to as well. So, mm -hmm. Sharon, anything you'd like to say before we finish? Well, I mean, first of all, thank you, everybody, for, for joining and for the really, really helpful feedback you've given us, which we'll, we'll take away. Just to note as well, we've done the strategy in all languages. When we get to the absolute final version, um, and, and it will be printed in all languages, I think we'll we'll do a, a kind of real refinement check on, on, on the language and we'll welcome, I think, further feedback there, obviously through our language offices, but, but also through members to make sure we've we've got it right um, and that it's meaningful in every language and it hasn't just gone through a sort of automatic translation somewhere. So um, please do look and any feedback and any further feedback, please give us and do answer the survey and encourage others to do it. But thank you for your time um, and thank you for your, your feedback. It was great. Thanks, Sharon. And thank you, Stephen, for working all the controls and the menti and everything. It was fantastic. And thanks, everyone, for the positive feedback. It's great to see so many uh, good comments in the, in the chat session as well. So thank you. And we hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.